Welcome once again. This is Dibian Wangu Chendo. Greetings to you all. And the bind they won't know. In Korea, Chirinya Zere. Eh? And I make a no. No, no. Today we are going to talk about meditation. Meditation, its health and spiritual benefits. Let me define the word meditation. Meditation is a spiritual practice and journey that helps to balance everyone's spirituality. It is a practice where an individual uses a technique like being mindful, focusing this mind on a particular object, thought, or activity. Meditation is training one's attention and awareness to achieve a clear mental, emotional calm and a stable state. When we talk about meditation, this is what should concern everyone, be you man or a woman. There are some times that you need to balance your spirituality to enhance your life physically, spiritually, mentally, academically, psychology, and <laughs> a whole lot of uh, other aspects where you need to apply such. For people who are always mentally active, there are times you need to quiet your mind, keep calm so that you think things through to avoid making mistakes. If you are a workaholic, you need to bring out time, make out time and relax. Then also include meditation in one of your daily activity as it will help you. So meditation, it is thinking deeply about something as well as the popular uh, usage of focusing one's mind for a long period of time. The act of giving your attention to only one thing. Ufi fe ki ge welo pigi do benaya ki we fi fe ku do bi we do lugi. You see, the act of giving your attention to only one thing, either as a religious activity or as a way of becoming calm and relaxed and to engage in mental and spiritual exercise, such as concentrating on one's breathing and thoughts or repetition of a mantra for the purpose of reaching a heightened level of spiritual awareness. What does this mean? I, as a Dibia, I need to take some time off to meditate. This will help me to align with my spiritual guide. This will help me get clear messages. This will help me balance my life and remove any clutter from my life, from my thought pattern, from anything that will make me not to uh, use my mind properly. You see, a lot of Dibias are always overwhelmed, especially if they, have done, they, they don't have people to talk with. Mostly, they, they, they engage in this uh, meditation and engage their spiritual guides. They are the ones that Adibia can talk with, can relate with, can practice uh, this meditation and also connect with them. Many times people don't know that we are also human. Even though we have that uh, divine call, we have that uh, super, so should I say supernatural power, so special power, all right? Most times people don't remember 
that we also have blood running through our veins. You see, this blood that runs through the vein shows that we are human. Most times people come with their problems. It's very overwhelming. Now, in a bit to look for solution to these people's problem, uh, likely the spiritualist or the Dibia will be overwhelmed. Sometimes they can even mistake uh, another person. Let me use Mr. A. They can mistake Mr. A for Mr. B or Mr. B for Mr. A. There has been time uh, where by some Dibias, instead of giving the message that is meant for Mr. B, they gave it to Mr. A because their mind is not settled. Because they don't take out time, time alone, alone time, you know, to go within themselves to restore balance, clarity, okay, to connect spiritually and calm down every frayed nerves. Some don't do that. What you see around them is noise. Even the people around them, they are noisy. And they can't say, please keep quiet. Most people, or most Dibias, ignorantly think that those noises are also part of ordinary spirituality. They don't have anything, uh, no kind of skill, no job. Always they come around the Dibia. They are looking for either drinks, looking for meat to eat. Some don't even want to involve themselves in running of any errand to help out the Dibia. So if you are a new person and you come to a Dibia's place and you see this kind of people around him, what will come to your mind? Of course, it might belittle the Dibia. Yes, it will also make you to become uneasy that probably you are in the wrong place. Now, there are some Dibias that people come to their place, they smoke. And some of them ignorantly think it is part of if name, or if name, or boy, if more. You continue smoking, talking with high pitched tone. Some they play music, loud music. What is the spirituality there in what the person is doing? You see? But there are some that you see if they are uh, balanced with their mental clarity. It is as a result of most times they are quiet. They go deep in thought. Or they can take a stroll into the forest, into nature's uh, corner. They walk around without letting people know their whereabouts. So they switch off their phone to avoid noise. Noise is one thing that is very distracting. It can disconnect you from your spiritual guide. It can make you not reason properly. It can make you become a procrastinator. It brings a lot of things into someone's life. If the person's life is always noisy. I am using Dibias as an example because I am one. And I have seen the usefulness of meditation. I have always practiced it as it has helped me to balance well. It has also helped me to distance myself from certain kind of noisy people. And also, there are people who come into your life with so much noise. They are so noisy. For example, people who keep on telling you their problem all the time, always, without even bothering to check if you are really listening to what they are saying. Some is as a result of their upbringing. Some as a result of uh, 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 their nonchalant attitude, or let me use this word, lakadasika attitude to life. Some it is natural like that. 
because there are different um, makeup of people, you know, people with different temperaments. Yes, that is the word. We have the choleric, which you know is a kind of noisy temperament. If a choleric doesn't talk, he will feel that nothing, life is nothing. Or maybe he's being suppressed. Melancholy, this kind of people, they hardly talk. We have the phlegmatic and the rest of them. So I have explained that being noisy uh, depends, is according to category, according to people's uh, temperament. And you are also aware that a person can have two temperaments, all right, depending on their mood. So assuming the Dibia is a choleric type, that means he's always surrounded with noise. He himself is noise. Whatever he says or opens his mouth to do is noisy. So you don't expect this kind of person to practice meditation. You don't expect such kind of Dibia to always have a quiet moment. Since he's noisy, whenever you come around to the place, you see him with noisy people, association of noise makers. So meditation is indeed very good. If you as a person were inculcated as part of your daily activity or when you are stressed, fatigued, of course, you can delve into meditation to calm your frayed nerves, to maintain balance, to think properly, to be able to do some calculation, you know, being calculative is a different uh, kind of uh, attitude, not a calculative type of being wicked, all right? To be able to focus mentally and be mentally strong and alert, you need to be calculative. You know that there is time for everything. Time to keep calm, time to, you know, react and make noise. Time of war, time of peace, time to love, time to hate, time to die, time to live. It is all about balancing. How do you balance your life so that you shut out the noise? Most people embark on, um, um, what, what should I say? Most people embark on vacations. Yes. They go to, you know, a very cool resort. To have their alone time. Some, they can have their alone time indoors. Maybe a particular section of the house, depending on how the house is built. Some stay in their studies. They use it as a, a, a room for meditation. So this varies, you know. Some travel to rural areas where they can be at peace and in tune with nature. Don't forget that as a Dibia, there are times you go and meet your Ndimiri, Ndetobigi. You go to the river, you go to the water and relate with your people. You know, you keep calm. Even the sitting, uh, the sitting running of water on the surface of the earth or on rocky you know, ground is enough to put you in the mood of meditation. Music helps. Maybe the birds chipping, chipping of the birds, it helps you relax and maintain, you know, calm, makes you focused, makes your empathic ability to be enhanced. So that when more while go, more go. But if your mind is noisy, your environment is noisy, if your spirit guide talks to you, you will not know. So most times I prefer people who know what they are doing in this uh, spiritual journey. You keep calm when there is a need to keep calm. When it is time to make noise, of course, you know, you make your noise. 
but let it have a limit. People who play loud music will not allow you to meditate. There are some people who believe that enjoying music is turning, uh, tuning it up to the uh, uh, highest volume where they will disturb other people's peace. Why should it be so? What is the enjoyment in playing loud music? There is no enjoyment there. It's full of noise. So it's better one play music and tune it down so you can listen to the beats, listen to the sound, listen to the instrument used to, you know, make that music what it is. When you play music at a lower pitch, low volume, you get to learn the lyrics and even uh, know the meaning. You communicate, you align and feel the vibes of that particular singer or musician. But what you have nowadays, especially for undergraduate uh, university uh, students, they are so noisy. That is how you know them. Like a mature adult boards a vehicle, maybe traveling to one destination or the other. And along the line, you know, they pick one, two, three, four uh, undergraduates, or let me say teenagers. You always know them because of their posteriorness, because of their loud to uh, uh, talks. They are loud mouthed, they are so noisy, they lack comportment. Now, if they have been taught how to behave in public. Of course, it should show in their conduct and their comportment whenever they are outside, whenever they are interacting with strangers. But today, parents also encourage noise. They believe that when they play loud music, that is when people know they are happy. They are living a happy life. They are having a happy marriage. Or when the neighbor complains, they say, let leave my, uh, my children, leave my child. You know, stuff like that. Not knowing that these children are being misled. So one way or the other, they must have learned this negative behavior somewhere. You know that the home is the first... Uh, 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 should I say agent of change or agent of socialization? It is in the home. Your learning starts first. So I'm talking to parents to do their job, to ensure that their kids know when to stay quiet, to allow peace and tranquility reign. To allow the flow of love. To know when adults are tired and fatigued. They should know. Mainly looking at your face. So they do what they go with their toys and stay quiet. And play quietly. But most parents don't care anymore. All they know is to walk 2 four, seven. They want to make all the money in the world. They don't want to inculcate good attitude into their children. Living a noisy life is not the best. Children yelling up and down, that is not home training. That is not home grooming. Many parents are at fault because of this. And when these children grow up, they take it to adulthood. You see where the problem starts. They feel it's natural because they have not been uh, cautioned or scolded to bring their voice down or to stop playing loud music or to stop yelling. A lot of people cannot differentiate between talking and yelling. Most times some give the excuse that that is how my voice is. So let's come back home a little bit because I've talked about a general area where it is applicable that people need uh, tranquility, they need calm, they need a noise free zone to be able to concentrate, maybe get inspiration, get innovative ideas. It is when you keep calm and meditate, 
that is when you give birth to creativity. Most people don't know. But always, if you allow your kids to yell, stomp all over the place, play loud music, increase the volume of the TV, how are you going to get those ideas, those innovation, that creativity? How are you going to grasp it? In a noisy home, in a noisy environment, playing loud music. Of course, the music is playing loudly and the kids are yelling. Adults are yelling, thinking they are talking to each other. The neighborhood, the noise. Sometimes most of these preachers with their megaphone, they constitute a nuisance. You come at 4 a.m., as early as 4 a.m. in the morning with your megaphone. And you start screeching and shouting all in the name of propagating a gospel. That is wickedness to me. And that is being spiritually insensitive. Because whoever you say you are projecting or pro uh, 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 propagating the gospel for should be a calm person, should be a man that inspires, not a man that disturbs. Not someone who can make another person not to sleep. Some churches are guilty of this. Anywhere you see noise, you hear, sorry, you hear noise from their church activity. They yell, yell, yell a lot, scream a lot, shout, stomp their feet, beat loud music, disturbing the whole neighborhood, disturbing the street, disturbing the area, all in the name of propagating gospel. Now, when you come to Odinana, you see some of these Ahadibias, they are be becoming something else. You know, we speak calmly to more. It's like, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationship. Even while you are doing spiritual work. You don't yell, you don't shout in ordinary spirituality. But most people that are returning back to ordinary, they have imported that uh, uh, foreign, uh, you know, behavior from the church right into ordinary. It is not so. And shouldn't be. That is why I don't like people being around me when I'm doing my spiritual work. It's just me and my spiritual guide. Me and my Oramwa. So that you can be focused. You maintain focus. And know what you're doing. I have given some examples. And I have told you that meditation is thinking deeply about something as well as the popular usage of focusing one's mind for a period of time. The act of giving your attention to only one thing, either as a religious activity or as a way of becoming calm and relaxed and to engage in mental and spiritual exercise, such as concentrating on one's breathing and thoughts or repetition of a mantra for the purpose of reaching a heightened level of spiritual awareness. Now, there are types of medita uh, meditation. Mindfulness meditation is for spiritualists, and it enhances their spirituality in order to help find clarity, clear vision, accurate and deep insight into spiritual healing and works. They start by going into seclusion or to a quiet place to communicate with their spiritual guide. First, they start by concentrating. When you concentrate, Gradually, you are focusing and you are aligning. The th uh, 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 then next, you go to visualizing. It helps in spiritual works. It helps you get insight to know what to do. Even we Wagulafa, when you are doing the spiritual work, you should be in spirit, in the spirit, because most times your own work can tell you to change some things or not to put some things or to remove some things that you're supposed. To use initially for that spiritual work. So when you visualize, you contemplate. While contemplating, you now cultivate thoughts in your mind that will help push and project that spiritual work. All right? So mindfulness meditation may allow for a decrease in measuring episode. 
and a drop in myadrin medication usage. So some of these spiritualists that are uh, always noisy or allow noise around them, it can lead to them having severe myadrin. Yeah? Myadrin episode. So if the noise is reduced through meditation, you can see they can focus, visualize, align, concentrate, and cultivate positivity in their mind. Why they are med meditating? That means that my dream will go away. They will now realize that, oh, the noise was the cause, was the source of that my dream. So we need to be careful and focus in what we do. We need to stay in, in a quiet place to communicate with our spiritual guides. That is why most Dibias, they have inner sanctuary. You know, their inner room, which they don't allow other people go into. You don't. They have their own workstation. You can just come and say, okay, this is the office where you can do consultation with you. But there is an inner sanctuary where they stay and communicate with their spiritual guides. Maybe during a go fall to two. Or be gomwa or be goji. Because before a Dibia wakes uh, when a Dibia wakes up, first you have to, you know, bring down your spiritual guide, some used instruments, you know, like bells, ogene, ichaka, you know, make noise and call them to a far far. But by then you've have swept your house, brush your teeth, but you know, taking your bath. Dress in neat clothes because I would be anti aborofula. We have come back to show the difference because those days in the ancient times, people see us as very dirty people with matted hair, uh, with wearing blood stained robes, living in uh, uh, mud houses or touched or, or, or leaking whatever, a uh, 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 roofed up house. So they look down on us. They degrade us. But today, <laughs> the difference is clear. You see graduates with, uh, you know, doctorate degree holders. You see professors. They are all DBS. You see them in your school, in the university. All right? You see them in hospitals. They are engineers. They are into so many vocations. They are professionals. It doesn't stop them from doing their DBA work. I'm telling you for a fact. So that when you see them, you will know that nowadays DBA, they are educated. They are well compacted. All things they do, you know, they are conscious. They don't go talking anyhow eating around in public, constituting, uh, constituting a nuisance. But it depends because we have levels in spirituality. We have levels of uh, spiritual awareness. Everyone works according to their own spiritual level of uh, awareness. And maybe interaction with other people. And also according to their level of education. But sometimes it's not about your level of education. It is about your level of spirituality. Even an illiterate knows that noise, spiritual guy do not need that. Even your fellow human being do not need that noise. There is time for everything. Okay? <laughs>